Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Starfield shipbuilding guide. Today, we're going to be talking about this wonderful Class A ship behind me. And while I explain the table of contents, you can all enjoy this beautiful little clip of this ship kicking ass in some fight. Now, this video will contain a stat block, then I will do an exterior walk around, then I will do an interior tour, then we will do a shopping list if you're using an outpost, then we will do a shopping list and a guide of where to buy everything if you are not using an outpost, and then we will do the awesome Lego assembly bit, the fun part of this video. Video. Then we'll probably wrap this up with showing some stats and painting it, explaining a few things. Then we can all have a wonderful time experimenting with the ship. Now let's go over the stat block here. Quick disclaimer, I have very high end ship skills. So if your skills are not maxed out for this ship, your stats might be slightly lower when you finish making it, but you have the potential to bring them up to match these numbers. That being said, this is a class A ship, so its primary function is speed and maneuverability. We have managed to keep this thing at 180 top sheet speed with 100 mobility, which is the max numbers you can get in Starfield currently. In space while boosting around, this ship tops out at 1,114. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's really, really fun flying around super fast in this ship. But maintaining those numbers, we have still managed to squeeze out 2,520 cargo. It's a very respectable number. We have five habitats on the thing so very customizable interior you can have any kind of stations you want any kind of storage any kind of layout you would like we've managed to squeeze an eight crew which is amazing that's the max you can have in game par bug that can give you nine we've managed to squeeze out a 30 light year jump range which is the maximum the ship does only have 210 fuel so the fuel efficiency skill is very important on the ship being such a compact and limited by mass it's kind of a necessity we have managed to squeeze 12 weapons on this thing just bristling with missiles and lasers and ballistic weapons thing is really really fun to fly shoots projectiles everywhere looks really really cool and we've also managed to get a shield on this ship with 1376 hp with the mobility and everything your proper maneuvering this ship can take on anything you come across in space with everything said and done this ship costs 270,000 credits to make so if you go into this build video, it's safe to have around 300,000 credits on you. And the final mass of this ship is 1,013 out of 1,020 to maintain 100% mobility in the builder. We, we squeezed in pretty tight, pretty good. Now let's quickly go over the requirements to fly this ship with your skills. You will not need a high piloting level like most videos because this is only a class A ship, but you will need Starship Design 4 for some of the modules that will be going on here. You will also need level 56 to build this ship exactly as I have in this video. That's why I'm calling this a high end ship, but like an end game class A ship. That being said though, it is only the shield reactor that requires that and there are lower level ones that are very close to it. That and the next requirement is like 46 for the re reactor and there are plenty of reactors with slightly less power which you could plug in this ship and it would still function almost identical to how it is so the ship can be built with slightly lower things and still function very very well now that we've gone over the stat block and the requirements it is time to get into the walk around of this beautiful ship that is the wrong button made myself really big all of a sudden now this this is my ship I don't like to name my ships for these build guides because that's on you to choose your name, make this ship your own. I love seeing what you guys do to these ships, hearing about your modifications and making them your own. My design philosophy is every legend, which we are legends in this universe, should have a distinctive feature on their ship. That means when you see it coming at you or you see this thing coming down, you know who it is, what they're about and what's going on. You either strike fear in someone or hope that you're coming to save the day. And for this ship, I put this little spine on top with these bright colors. It's a nice distinctive feature that you don't see on many ships. It is a very clean top end, which is really, really nice. Now let's move in here. We're gonna start off at the front. You got a nice Nova cockpit with an easy access landing gear, completely up front here, so you can just run in your ship and run out super simply. And with these shield reactors on class A ships, you more or less have to embrace the, the non-symmetricalness to have the best equipment. So we went with the shield generator, slapped on that side. I did a huge missile pod on this side to counteract it to try and keep it neat still. We got weapons down below, weapons under the wings. It just looks gorgeous. There's weapons tucked in everywhere. It's just a mean looking ship. It's got great angles and deflection. Uh, very few bullet traps, but unfortunately you can't really stop the bullet traps. Uh, I love these offset engines. It just looks like it hauls. Um, and I like to put in the grav tractor right here at the back. Just think it adds a little bit of flair here. You have a nice rounded edge again. Uh, the ship is very much meant to fight head on or kind of 
from the top, not so much exposing your belly here. It's a little exposed down here if you were gonna combat from this side. But I just love the sleekness of these pods and the angles on the edge. This thing looks so good. And here's our unsymmetrical shield generator. See if I can't boost like a proper gamer and get up here and show you guys the distinctive features of the bright color with the cockpit here in line with this amazing spine up here. Uh, with these solar with the radiators they look like solar panels but they're radiators on both sides it's just a really really clean flat smooth top uh it gives you a good line of sight too while fighting in space but i just think it's a nice little distinctive feature of this ship now let us head inside and i will show you the five habs that i went with now all five of the habitats i chose i went with the nova variant primarily for the rounded look on the outside of the ship but you can change them to whatever you want we will be starting off in the Nova, 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 I don't know what Nova is. The Nova All-in-One B. This is more of an RP choice here because the A version actually has a galley and I lose the galley going with the B. But the B has three total beds, so three crew members could sleep at a time just for RP sakes. But then we're going to move into an infirmary, which would have a research station and a pharmaceutical lab, which is very useful because the ship has every single crafting station on it in What's the variation I did. And then we take a right here into our third habitat and we have this beautiful little workshop. Okay, the RP walks a little bit slow here. Um, we come in here, you have your industrial bench, your weapon bench, and your spacesuit bench, giving us all the crafting stations. Then if we cut across the hallway into the fourth module, we have a control room. And then if we move into the next one, we also have another control room. I went with two control rooms because it allows me to have eight total crew because the cockpit only starts with two. And both of them have 150 storage chests in them. Again, you can change these modules out and put whatever ones you want in here to fit your needs. I love seeing people's modifications. We're gonna head all the way back up front the nice little Nova Galactic cockpit. It's got like two little stations on the side for your co-pilot, it's a big primary one here. It's got decent field of view if you like flying in first person and it feels very fighter-ish. It's not like a huge C-class ship. It's just a personal preference of what I like. Now that we've done the tours of the outside and the inside, Let's jump on over to our trash ship that we're going to turn into this beautiful ship. Bam! Just like that through the magic editing, we're over here in this gorgeous little ship here that I uh, acquired in ways we're not going to speak of. But either way, I make all of my videos and the assumption that every single part you bring originally will be deleted. So just bring yourself a garbage ship you don't care about or whatever, expecting to delete every single part of it. Now, for everyone that likes building their ships at their outposts, and is quite familiar with shipbuilding. I'm going to put up a shopping list here for you guys. This shows you everything you can get at your outposts versus the few things you can't and where they're located for you to do your shopping. Now, for everyone else, we're going to go on a tour of the galaxy and we're going to do all of this construction and not at outposts. So for everyone that wants that shopping list, it's here it is. Now pause. You should pause the pause the video if you want to read this. Definitely pause. Are you paused yet? Have you paused yet? If you paused yet, we're good. Not, maybe not. Okay, we're going to move on either way if you've paused or not. I am starting my journey in New Atlas just because everyone's familiar here. But we're actually going to go to our map. We are going to zoom out twice. Then we are going to be heading to Neon City, which is in Vol 2 as our first stop here. I can make myself small again. I don't need to stay so big for this. Then we're going to head to Vol to Alpha, the planet, rotate around. We're going to go to the Neon Core and land at the Neon Core. And once we're at the Neon Core, have these beautiful loading screens because who loves a good black loading screen? Usually they put like a screenshot here with some hints, but nope. For the video, we're getting just the abyss. Once here on Neon, you are going to take it right and just run. We're going to run all the way to the end of this place. Don't go some people prefer third person, some people prefer first. I don't even know. We're headed to Tayo Astroneering as our first stop, which is all the way through this beautiful little lobby here. Did I actually make it here without running out of stamina? It's a first. And we're going to go to this elevator and go to Tayo Astroneering downstairs. Then we are going to wait for another black loading screen. Head out, take a right. Take a right, go downstairs, you talk to this beautiful little lady right here, and you are going to view and modify yeah, your ship. Thank you, I really appreciate that one. Now, your shopping list is right here for Tayo Astroneering, so pause the video, pause it, come on, pause the video, buy your stuff, 
And then, then we're going to resume it. Did you pause it? Hopefully you pause it. We pause it. Yeah, we pause it. Yeah. Okay. We're going to be moving on here. Now that you finished that shopping list, this is what you should have. I like doing these top-down views. It very clearly explains what you should have, what you shouldn't have, and hopefully you have everything here. Uh, super quick disclaimer, randomly in the middle of the video, all the weapons I choose are not the best in the game. They are personal preference for the super maneuverability type A ship. I wanted weapons that you could fire infinitely and not have to worry about energy management. So you can just hold down the button and fire. That's why I chose these ones. But to begin here, your shopping list, you should have Dangan W. Kanan time times four you should have one at tayo cowling four top and a pinpoint 4g landing gear is all we were picking up here at the tire place so hopefully you got these now the fun part is i'm just gonna jam these on my ship somehow and then show you what i did because you just got to get everything to fit on here because it doesn't matter just like the magic i have everything on my ship i actually deleted all the old weapons deleted the landing clear clear gear and then i bought like two horizontal weapon mounts to just slap on the four guns we bought i threw my landing gear underneath and i threw this tile cowling just at the back it's nothing too fancy you just got to get it on here we'll pull it all off the final stop and build things properly you should have one flight check error that's going on here so if we come in here it says the ship has unassigned weapons so we just need to click on weapons real quick and go to your cannons and assign them to something and then we should be ready to move on to our next objective hit accept and say yes now we're going to be heading out to demos which if we hit tab double click to zoom out here zoom out again we will be heading to seoul we have home of earth you can see alpha centauri's here which is where we started this journey at new atlantis we're going to click on seoul zoom on in we are going to go to mars we're going to click on demos here which is a beautiful little asteroid we are going to set a course to demos should be a station here we can dock at we're just getting pure black loading screens this entire video you guys don't get to see any of the cool screenshots i have we don't get any hints whatsoever just pure black screenshots now i'm gonna boost on over here in our nonsensical little ship here wait for the dock to pop up usually i smack hard into the side of the station quickly wait for their beautiful beautiful docking animations bam through the magic of editing you guys don't have to wait for a docking screen what a miracle we're gonna run straight take a slight left we're gonna come down the stairs and demo station talk to this beautiful ball gentleman we're going to modify our ship and then you guys are going to be buying what is on the shopping list on your screen it should be a total of three items and uh yeah you should pause it here and keep this on your screen unless you have good memory so pause it if you haven't paused it yet you're about to lose your chance to pause it is it paused hopefully it's paused we're paused yet yes you paused it good job but how would you know that if you hear this either way moving on now that you're done shopping you should have this many modules here you should have four demo spine c's two demo spine a's and one 110 dp docker from demos i forgot to do this for tayo hopefully we didn't ruin everything now i'm gonna jam these on my ship somehow because we got one more stop to make and the monstrosity grows you can see here i just bought two demos companion ways one here one here just so i had enough space on top of my ship to throw these on so you can just do that just somehow get everything you bought attached to your ship with no flight warnings and we'll be good now we're going to head on to our final stop after accepting our changes the guy's gonna be like what did you do to your ship man like, i don't know it's fine don't sorry ask questions, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry to see me go, too. Such a wonderful place. We're going to hit L to open up the uh, quest log and then back out of that because menus are weird. And we're actually not going to go very far from this whole system. We are actually going to head up here into Titan. And we are going to land at New Homestead as our final stop for those of us not crafting at our outpost landing pad. And once we are here, we have a mighty... Oh, we gotta wait for a beautiful little scan. The ship makes a weird clicking sound in space. It's kind of odd. Either way, we don't have any contraband. So through the magic editing, we're gonna land at this planet. And just like that, we're here at Homestead. You thought I was gonna ban you again or scare you, but I didn't. Now let's head on over here to this vendor. We're going to talk to him. We're going to view modify ships. We are going to hit the B on the keyboard to go into ship builder. And then you are going to purchase this much longer shopping list. I might even break it up into two shopping lists so you should uh 100 definitely pause it with that little bit of asr we had when we got asmr when we got here so pause it you should pause it you paused yet did you pause it yet i made myself big are you paused if you're not paused it you should be now i'm huge pause yourself okay come on let's pause it you guys know we know the shindig hopefully you're paused now that you've finished your noble galactic shopping list which is by far the longest one you should have this shamandering of units here we're going to start at the top here saying the Cermak DC-202 reactor. Hopefully I pronounced that way. 
four white dwarf 3015 engines 3015 i don't know why i don't just say that and you should have five nova galactic two by one habitats uh, i just have all, all in one burst we'll change them as we assemble the ship you should have one ng6 landing bay two ng20 landing gear one megalin c1 cockpit one helios 400 g drive a Galleon S204 cargo hold. I called that a G drive. It's a grav drive. Don't ask me why. You should have four Altai 280A missile launchers, four Disruptor 3310 proton beams. You should have one Deflector SG60 shield generator, one 500THE tank, six horizontal weapon mounts, seven Nova thruster port arrays, and four porthole tops. Four Nova Cowling 1 LPFs, four Nova Cowlings 2 LTFs, and four Nova Radiator Tops to finish the shopping list. Now, we are going to come over to our ship and we are going to pull off everything we bought that's on our shopping list, not the extra modules we had to add on to add the old modules, but we're going to tear the ship apart and we're going to make a giant grid here of all the pieces and then we're going to get to assembling. So I'm going to jump on over to that. Okay, this is what all the parts you need to build the ship should look like. I pulled them all off my old ship. If you want to pause this here and set up your layout just like this so it's really easy to see where I pull things from, feel free to. If not, do it your own way. I don't care. Now we're going to fly over here and we still have the rest of our old ship. We're just going to yeet everything out of existence. Hopefully I don't delete any of the bits and bobs I actually need to make an ass out of myself, but I think we are pretty darn good. Now the beginning of the assembly of all the parts. Hopefully all the people building out your outposts have caught up and been here. So we're going to start with the Melgan Megalon C1 cockpit. We're just going to throw it all the way out here. We're going to start at the very, very front and kind of work our way back. Kind of, sort of. It gets a little chaotic, but that's how I operate. We're going to then move the NG6 landing bay directly under here with the first part. And you can see here, it's going to have like this weird sticking out bit and it's too big to fit there. But that's how it's going to be. We're going to take our first Nova Galactic all-in-one habitat and huck it there. I'm actually going to leave this one as the A because I actually like the A better, even though the RP one has more beds if you change that over to a B. Then we're going to take our next Nova Galactic cab, and I'm going to hit the arrow keys on my keyboard to turn this into an infirmary, and then place it down. Then we're going to grab another hab. We're going to throw it one offset to the back, just like this, and I'm going to turn this one into a control station to add four crew slots. We're gonna grab another, another Nova Galactic cab. We're gonna throw it in the back, just like this. You can see how they're offset and coming back together. This makes that hallway that comes around and wraps around back into here. And we're going to swap this over to another control station. That should bring our max crew up to eight, which is very important for this. We're going to take our last habitat and then we're going to throw it here. See how they're symmetrical. You got two, two, it's sticking off the back, connected to one of each of these. This one I'm going to change into a workstation for myself. There we go. Then we're going to grab our first white dwarf 315 engine, throw it on the back here. You can see how it's in line just with all these other habitats. Then we're going to grab another one and do the same on the other side. We're going to grab another white dwarf engine. We're going to slap it down underneath here. You can see how it's offset back by one. So it's attached to this part of this habitat here. We're going to do the same on the other side, bring it down one. And you can see how that looks. It already starts to have that really, really cool silhouette and there's barely any modules attached to this thing. It's so cool. And next we're gonna get the bottom of the ship out of the way. We're gonna grab our pinpoint 4G landing gear from Tayo. We're gonna throw that under here right behind your NG6 landing bay. You can see exactly how that lines up right there. And then we are going to grab our 110 DP docker. We're going to hit Z to flip it over so it is now facing downwards and put that right behind the landing gear. You can see how it's perfectly in line, just like that. Then we are going to grab our reactor and we are going to drop our reactor right under here, next in line. You can see it there lined up just perfectly. And we are going to take our cargo, our Galleon S204 cargo, and we're going to snap it down underneath here. You gotta bear with me here. The camera angles get really, really wonky. But you're gonna have your landing gear, your docker, your reactor, then your cargo bin right here. And that very last slot, it's not the very, very last slot, but we are going to throw in our fuel tank. So our 500T H3ET tank is going to come in here and snap right onto the back of there. 
And I should have done this earlier, but we can do it now. We are going to take our Tayo Cowling. What do I do with my Cowling? It's right here. Tayo Cowling for top. We are going to hit the arrow key over to transform it into a rear facing one. We're going to throw that up top here, sticking right off the back in between the two engines. You can see how there's a gap below it. And now we should be able to attach our Helios 400 grab drive right onto the back down here at the bottom, which we could have probably done anyways, but perpetual chaos is what I exist in. So that's how we're doing this. Now that that's slapped in there, we will move on to the very, very top of the ship. We'll do some of the signatures of mine on this. We will put the Demos Spine A at the very, very front here on the very first part of the Noble Galactic Habitat. Then we will take our first piece of Demos Spine C and we will leave it orientated how it is. So the big part of it is attached to the big part of the A spine. And then we will take another Demos C spine and we are going to hit Z on the keyboard to flip it. I think it's Y on controller. I don't use controller, so I don't know. So the little parts are attached here, and then the bigger parts over here. Then we'll take another C. We'll put it right behind that, so the big parts are lined up to kind of get in the rhythm of it here. Take our final C spine, hit Z again to rotate it so it's small. So it's like small, big, small, big. You get this little pattern. We're going to take our Demo spine A, rotate it by hitting Z on the keyboard, and smack it right down here at the end. So this is just spine runs all the way along these three habitats right here. Even this super aggressive little stance right here. Then we are going to take our first Nova Cowling 2LTF, and we're going to snap it to the front of these habitats sticking off on the edge here. We're going to grab another one and do the same on the other side. Terrible camera angles, but I pan around, you guys get the gif. So now we're looking a little bit like that. Then we're going to take another one. We're going to hit Z to flip it upside down and snap it to the bottom. You can see here there's still going to be this gap behind it, which we will fill next after we do the mirror on the other side. So we now have both sides starting to get their like super sleek looks here with this giant gap behind it. We're going to take an NG-20 landing gear. We are going to error over twice and transform it into an NG-20 landing gear wide. And then we're going to snap it in these gaps right behind here to fill that in. I'm going to do the same on this other side, transform into wide, come on down, get it to snap into place, just like so. It's starting to look like a ship here. Then we're going to take our Enova Cowling 1LPFs, these little angle pieces. We're going to snap one right here on this first section of this Nova Galactic thing, right behind our cowling on the outside edge of this to make this a little bit sleeker. We're going to hit Z to rotate it and do the same on the other side. I'm going to take another one, bring it down here. I'm just going to bring them both down here so I don't have to keep panning over there because pieces are getting quite far away. Then we are going to hit the arrow keys to transform it into a Nova Cowling 1LPA, which is this reverse looking one. And snap it in here so they seamlessly fit together. Do the same, then hit Z to flip it, and we're going to do it to the mirror. And then I'm actually going to double click my ship, hit spacebar, and move the whole thing closer. And apparently I had one of my engines not attached properly. So we're going to reattach that onto the bottom. That does happen. And now everything should be much closer and I don't have to pan around so much. We are going to grab our Nova radiator tops and they are going to go on the outside of these habitats. The two sticking out habitats will get radiators across the top, just like so. Super easy, this build. And then we will put our shield on this front right side here. You can see how it is attached uh, to the very first Nova Galactic hab you have here at the front side. So this side is empty. Then we get into the actual complicated bit of this entire build. We are going to take our horizontal weapon mounts and we are going to throw them on this second slot here behind the shield generator. We're going to take another one and slap it down here in this little crevice sticking out like it's kind of tight in there in between this cowling and the main body. So they're stacked directly on top of each other. We're going to take another one and we're going to stick it all the way out here on the end of this landing gear at the end of this pylon underneath these two Nova cowlings. And we're going to mirror that on the other side almost. We're going to put the mirror of the one that goes underneath this cowling on this landing gear. However, to mimic the in symmetry or symmetry, lack of symmetry, we are going to slap one on the very, very front here instead of putting one two back like on this side. So this is going to be equal to our shield generator. And then our last one is going to go down here 
below this one, leaving the second port open up here. We are going to grab our Nova thrusters. We're gonna fill that gap up here so you can see the asymmetry where on this side it's a weapon mount, but on this side it's going to be a Nova thruster array. We'll take another Nova thruster array. We're gonna stam it right here on the first one of your middle habitat, right above your docking bay in between these cowlings. I think this just adds good depth to the build. Um, these aren't necessary at all. And when you are using auxiliary control mode, you can actually see them firing off, which is really cool. But we're gonna take another one. We're gonna mirror it on this side. Take another one. And you can see way under here, attached to the side of your docking port, you can throw another one. Again, I just think it adds nice depth and a little bit of waviness deep in here. I'm gonna do the same on this side. It gets a little tricky jamming things in these tiny little holes. We all know what that's like, right? Uh, you come down here and you can see it's kind of attached to your docking module. It's a really, really hard angle to get, but it's this thing right here. And then we're going to take what is my last Nova thruster array, which I realized I messed up and I don't have. I'm missing one. So we're going to slap this down here. I'm going to try and get it to attach to the back of this fuel tank here. Um, so it's behind your lower engine. And there's a fuel tank and the grab drive. Then it's going to be right here. Again, I just think this had depth. And then I'm actually going to close the clone this one, which is Alt G on the keyboard. I don't know controller. I'm just going to buy another one because uh, you're supposed to have one on this side as well, but I do not have one available. So I messed up during my other part of the video. We're going to take our porthole top. We are going to hit Z to flip it around. And we're actually going to come back underneath this ship. We're going to attach one to the bottom of every single engine, if the game would do right. I agree with people that the underneath camera work really, really sucks. Can we grab all three of these and zoom them in here? Just so they're like in the general vicinity of where I'm trying to attach these things. Flip you over, put you here. I know these portholes don't actually do any- what the heck did I just do? I think I grabbed an engine by accident. Whoa, that is a terrible camera angle. It's so wonky. Okay, we can do this. We can get these together. Together, we will find a way to attach these to the bottom of the ship. Going up. But as I was saying, I know these don't actually do anything when attached to the engine. I just think when painted correctly, they add a really, really cool little feature. That's like this reflective plate on the back of your engines. Like you can kind of see it from far away. Um, and when you match the frame color with the engine, it kind of blends in and it just gives this really cool like... It breaks up the silhouette of the engines, and I just think it looks really, really cool back here. It's literally just a flare piece. And now we get to jam all of these beautiful weapons on our ship. We are going to start with our Dungan WD cannons. The first one, we are going to jam under this little winglet over here. It actually fits really, really tight up in under here on the left side and the left side only. Then we're going to grab another one, and we're going to come all the way down here to underneath your landing bay is where this is going to go. Uh, you can see the landing bay has two mounting points. So we're going to take another one and we're going to slap it underneath there just like that. So you've got two under there. You've got one under this cowling tucked in way, way up there. And we're going to take the very last one and we're going to come down here and we're going to tuck it in right here in between the cowlings. So you're on your, not your top weapon mount, but your lower weapon mount here jammed in here in between your cowlings where it's really, really tight. And I just love how... Like it just closes that gap in and it looks really, really good. Now we're gonna come over here and we're going to do our disruptors. We're gonna put the first one all the way out here on this left wing. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the right side here. We're gonna mirror this, bring it down, get it to snap in the right spot. And if I can get my camera zoom just right and not be at negative 12, we can see what I'm talking about. This little cowling wing out here has a mount of both of them. Then we're going to come out here and grab another disruptor. We're going to slap it on your lower weapon mount on the side of your ship here. So the same one that your gun and cannon is attached to. <laughs> Speaking of which, we might not need this weapon housing anymore since I changed things. Sweet modifications in mid assembly. We're going to come over here and we're going to slap this one down in a mirror pattern, right? Just like that. You can see here, so now you have all four and we jam this on the lower cowling down here. Then if we come back here, we grab a missile launcher. We will be putting two of them on this left side weapon thing to match the asymmetry we've got going on here. We will take the last two and these will be going down here on this lower cowling. Okay, I don't know where that just vanished to, but it vanished somewhere. But 
Oh, the camera angles are amazing. We love them. They're so fantastic. But on this uh, lower Nova Cowling 2L, we will put a missile launcher and we will mirror the same on the other side, just like so. Maybe, come on, we can do it. Just like that. All of our weapons are on here. And uh, mid filming, we have realized that this weapon mount is redundant now that I have changed the weapon placing so much to make this look as good as possible. So we're going to delete that. And I'm going to Alt G, a Nova Thruster Array, hit Z to flip it. And we're actually going to mirror both sides. And just like that, I've screwed up my whole video, but I'm not refilming over something so slow. But the ship is finally assembled. Now the fun bits. I'm gonna talk a little bit about design premises um, while we're in here. Again, I've stated earlier, the weapons on the ship are not the greatest. If you look at a sheet, they are the best that meet my requirements. I really don't like managing energy of the auto weapons and we can't put turrets on the ship yet. So I went with one set of ballistics and one set of energy weapons. So something to take out the shields and something to do damage. Uh, I didn't go with lasers cause I like the range of the disruptors. So you can start working down their shields at long range and uh, they still do good versus the hull as well. And then when you actually close with range, their shields should be down and you can just go to town starting to rant. So we're just going to go into the part where we paint this thing and I'm going to magic of editing you guys into that. You know, I went to select my entire ship to paint it and we have a uh, Nova radiator not selected. So if you have an error that says uh, you're of unattached modules, you can double click your ship and uh, you can move it around and it'll leave whatever's not attached around, or you can just look for whatever's not highlighted, a little tip there. And just like that, through the magic of the YouTubes, we have a completely painted ship. I really, really like the dark colors. It hides a lot of the uh, uh, bad lines and everything uh, in this game because the modules don't fit together absolutely perfectly unless you're doing kind of glitchy exploit modification things to have parts phase through each other, which I do not do in my ship builds yet, maybe somewhere way down the line. But as of right now, I do like simple builds and uh, this is kind of what we have here, but I love the bright colors. I think I'm like, I've talked about my design philosophy is some distinct feature per ship with bright colors. So everyone knows that the legend is here. Show up. You should have one final flight check error going on and it should be your weapons. Um, so for me, I like putting the disruptor proton beams on my left mouse as my primary weapon and the uh, cannons as my right mouse and the missiles as my G key. Um, that way you're just like in your mind, your primary fire will be your longer range engaging one. Uh, and then you can just hold that down. And then when they get within range for your ballistics, you can just hold that down or you can just hold them all down. But the way the ship works, you just hold all your buttons down and things just fly out of you and murder everything. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, obviously rename your ship. I renamed mine to class A for this uh, guide video. It is what it is. And now that we're completely done and the ship is painted and looking all good, we are going to back out. Now I'm going to sit at this screen to end the video so you everyone can see the stats. That they are actually what I say they are. They're over there on the side. Um, I'm not going to leave in the constructor because modifications to your ship uh, from skills and crew do not apply when you're in the builder. So those are the stats of the final thing built. Jeez, I just love the way the ship looks. It's so sleek. And I really, really like the clean top. You get, don't get many ships like that in this game. People put weapons or other things up in there, but we managed to jam them all down here below everywhere else. But uh, yeah, so let me know in the comments what you do to make the ship your own, what colors you went with, what modifications you do. Um, I love hearing that about people and what they do to the ships to make it their own. I hope the ship serves you really, really well. I hope you have fun flying because it's actually quite a blast to fly. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll set up a Discord at some point and get a channel in there for you guys to post pictures of your modifications to the ship and just some of your own cool designs. And yeah, I really appreciate all the support. You guys have been blowing up the channel again. It's been quite a few years since I've gone hard on the good guides in the let's play so uh yeah, let's do this everyone i'll see you all in the next one take pay out should also share this on reddit because like self-promotion is frowned upon but like if you guys do it huh? <laughs> Either way, everyone. i'll see you guys bye